I'm a Speedway spark plug. I grew up just a couple of miles from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway track. And all through my grade school and high school days, I listened to the cars in the early spring going around. This flag was signed by 31 of the 33 drivers in 1958 at the conclusion of the race. On the day of the race, on lap number one, 1958, all 33 cars were headed down the back stretch on lap number one, mm -hmm. and two drivers, Ed Elysian and Dick Rathman, tried to reach turn three, both of them at the same time, and it caused an accident that Pat O'Connor was killed in before they even completed lap number one. Right. So that's what makes this particular year yep. eventful but tragic. Okay. And of course, it was later won by Jimmy Bryant. Right. And we can only assume that this flag was probably started to be signed a day, two days, perhaps three days before, as we have Pat O'Connor's signature here. The only thing we can't figure out between any of us is how Jimmy Bryan managed to save the center logo for himself. Yeah, and to this day, I don't know. Maybe there's a listener out there that can explain why Jimmy Bryan got to sign the center spot. He was the winner, yep. and it had to have taken place after the race, right. but yet we have a signature on there of one driver that didn't even complete the race. Right, and we've looked, and we don't see Jimmy Bryan <clears throat> in another spot. No. Sometimes what we'll see is we'll see the driver who wins on another spot, and then again in that center position after they've won. We've got 18 other signatures on here of people that were related to racing, mm -hmm. racing dignitaries, mm -hmm. former winners, so you've got 31 plus 18. That's the number of signatures that are on this flag. And as far as I know, it's the only flag of its sort. Yeah. Through your father's occupation, you got to meet a lot of these drivers. I did. My father had an accounting firm on Main Street. And so I grew up looking over the kitchen table and my dad and maybe a couple of these drivers would be there and they'd have a cold beer while they talked taxes. In 1956, I was in the Soapbox Derby and I had to build my own car. And that year, Pat O'Connor, came to our house to have his taxes done and he brought Ray Nichols with him, his chief mechanic. And while my dad was doing his tax return at our kitchen table, I said, Pat, I've got my soapbox derby out in the garage. Would you like to come and see it? And he said, sure. And he got Ray Nichols, chief mechanic, and Pat went out to my garage and they said, looks really good, Jackie, but you've got to align the tires. And they spent time and they got my tires aligned. and. I raced my car and I got more speed out of it in the Soapbox Derby because of Pat O'Connor. So tell me how you, how you got it. A photographer by the name of Cook had it. He passed away about 15, 20 years ago. An auction company had an estate sale and I went to that hoping to get photographs. This came up for sale and I bid on it and bought it. Yeah. And how much did you pay for it? No records. I couldn't find the receipt, but I think around a thousand, maybe eleven $1 hundred dollars. And I'm just in love with it. I've okay. kept it all these years. Sure. What would you think it's worth today? Oh boy. <laughs> Let's think big. Mm -hmm. Maybe three or four thousand. Yeah. I well, don't know. Yeah, it's quite the special piece for you to have brought in today, especially being here in Indianapolis. I would put a value on this piece for insurance purposes of ten thousand dollars. Wonderful. Wonderful. Wow. I didn't expect that. <laughs> yeah, marvelous. Oh my gosh. Well, it's a part of my growing up and it'll be passed on to my son.